I want to thank uh, Congresswoman Weil for the passport into her district. Where are you? There you You've been a tireless champion for the working men and women of the Lehigh Valley, helping us pass the tax cut for families with children that people are seeing now in their bank accounts, showing up in their bank accounts every month, and working with our administration to expand home care for seniors. Joining us now, Democratic Congresswoman Susan Wild of Pennsylvania. Uh, and uh, we, we're, we want to begin with this photograph of you in the presidential limousine riding uh, with the president and Pennsylvania's governor, Tom Wolf. You're on your way to that Mack Trucks plant in Okunji, Pennsylvania. Uh, the, the president was at the plant, or uh, was he, did he get the phone call from Steve Rochetti or Ron Klain in the car on the, on the way to the plant telling him about the bipartisan agreement in the Senate? I believe he received it after we got out of the car um, and before he started his remarks. There was a brief period of time where I wasn't with him, and I think he got the phone call then. I was receiving texts from my colleagues in Washington at just about the same time telling me that we had a deal. So when he came out and announced it, it was great news. And so th this deal, uh, actually uh, 32 Republicans uh, in the Senate, but only 32 this time, uh, voted against everything that you're trying to accomplish at the Mack Trucks factory today, and uh, that there's an industry uh, and a factory that depends totally on the quality of the infrastructure that those trucks roll out over every day across this country. Uh, and, and, but it does look like this bipartisan bill is on track. Uh, what is your reaction uh, from your perspective on the House of Representatives for what happened in the Senate today? I'm ab absolutely delighted. It was great news. Um, it got a huge uh, cheer from the audience today when the president announced it. I think it's really remarkable. You mentioned the 32 Republican senators who voted against it. But on the other hand, we know that 17 voted for it. Um, so it was the best example of bipartisanship that we've seen in a while. A week ago, we were afraid that this deal was almost dead. So I was thrilled to hear it. it's going to be it, it, infrastructure will do a world of good for districts like mine. And what about the the reconciliation package that is being put together uh, in the Senate Budget Committee? Will also be done in the House Budget Committee. Uh, that will add, that will be an even larger infrastructure package. Uh, how, how does that look tonight in relation to this bipartisan deal? I know that um, there are senators who have stated that they wouldn't vote for it. Um, all I can say to that is we've come a long way in just a week. I think that um, the power of discussion and negotiation and compromise, um, which sometimes seems like a lost art in Washington, it has been resurrected. And I think we're going to be able to get to the point where we can um, get this thing across the finish line and have, have a very resounding vote in favor of both the infrastructure package and ultimately the reconciliation package. It may not look like it does right now. It may not have everything in it that people want. That's the whole point of compromise and negotiation. You're, uh, you're in one of those uh, districts that you face a lot of Republican voters every day. You've got to talk to them. You represent them. Uh, what is what is their sense of uh, that you're getting from them about the job President Biden is doing so far? I am overwhelmingly getting a very good sense from my constituents, people who, um, quite honestly, have been really happy with the steady hand that he has brought um, to the administration. Um, that we have gotten so much done in just a few short months. Um, there have been people in my district that have approached me about their small businesses, restaurants, but not just restaurants, a lot of smaller businesses out there that have said that they were on the brink of closure. And the work that has been done by the president and by Congress in getting the American Rescue Plan across the finish line has been a game changer. So I am overwhelmingly hearing positive um, remarks from people very much in line with the president's poll numbers, which have been pretty steady. I know uh, some of what you went through on January 6th and the attack on the Capitol. You've talked about it. Uh, uh, Congressman Crow has talked about his experience with you. And in fact, there's a photograph we have of uh, 
Congressman Jason Crow uh, with you uh, and comforting you uh, at the time of, of what seemed like the most dangerous period of the attack on the Capitol. What was your reaction to the testimony that we heard yesterday from the police officers who defended you and saved you on that day? You know, like so many Americans, I watched yesterday, I watched as much as I could. We had a lot of committee work going on at the same time. I was mesmerized by what I heard. And the thing that really came home to me during their testimony was how close we members of Congress were to grievous bodily harm and how they literally saved the day for us. So notwithstanding the picture that you just showed and, and how that day affected me, I have so much gratitude for these officers, for all of the Capitol Police who, and for the DC Metropolitan Police who really saved us um, and prevented harm to, to the members of Congress that quite honestly, many of those uh, terrorists, as they were called by one of the policemen, um, were there to, to inflict. Congresswoman Susan Wilde, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And coming up, we have breaking news in the Washington Post tonight about daily phone calls, daily calls that Donald Trump was making to his last acting attorney general.